take three. Hello and Happy New Year from the Literary Nunnery. It is time for our 2017 second half book roundup with your host, Leslie. That's me. Um, these books that I read, these are the top 15 books I read since July 4th, 2017, and they're not in any order. It's just the order that I happened to see them in on my library reading history, so let's get to it. And I don't have pictures of most of them. I have pictures, but I don't know how to put them in because I haven't learned how to use iMovie yet, but we'll get to it. All right, first up, Tosh Hart's Tolstoy by Katie Ormsby. This is a book about a web series, a Tolstoy web series, and as you should know, or you may not know, but now you will, I love web series, and this is based on some real life events that happened during the author making a web series, but I don't know which one it was, and I probably didn't watch it, and I don't really want to, but the book was good. And I also read Unquiet Land by Sharon Shin. It's the latest installment of her Elemental Blessing series, which is a series that I love. Well, I really love the first book in the series. I read it almost every time I come home. And this book was almost as good. It was really a good continuation. I also read The Library of Fates by Aditi Korana. It is a book about how a choice that you make changes your destiny and if you go back in time and make a different choice that changes everything too. It's something like that. I don't want to like spoil anything too much and so that was really vague and maybe not accurate but I really liked it obviously. Uh, what Goes Up by Katie Kennedy. I loved this book. It's about a bunch of geniuses who are trying to get in on a space program and they're like high schoolers and like there's all sorts of like pseudoscience that I love and it funny and it's touching and whatever so I really liked that one. In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan. I mean I'd already read most of this because she wrote it as a like short story online before she uh, decided to publish it into a real book but it was really fun to see what changes she'd made and there was a little addition too um, to the end to make it more to make it end more because it was supposed to be a little prequel to a short story. Anyway. I don't know if I'd recommend it if you don't already, if you didn't already know about the book, but I love, love, loved it. And it validated a lot of things that were bugging me. When I read the short story, I was like, that, 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 that doesn't fit with the prequel, but she worked it all out. And so I was really happy about that. Apex by Mercedes Lackey. It was the conclusion of that one series with the dragons and the hounds. Anyway, it was it was worth reading. Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows. This is a book about a girl who discovers a secret that could topple the government, and so they sent her to prison, and there's a bunch of other young people in prison there too, and they're like, eh. And I, did I finish the whole thing? I know how it ends, but I can't remember if I saw all of it, like if I read all of it first, which happens a lot. It happens with this next book that's on my list too, Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. Um, it's about like... Basically, it's loosely based on, like, climbing Mount Everest, but it's a fantasy-type thing, and I didn't read the whole thing. But what I read was good, and I might even read the sequel. I mean, I plan to. The Waking Land by Kelly Bates. Uh, my mom recommended this book to me. It's about a girl who was kidnapped, and I mean, she knows she was kidnapped, and she's been living in enemy kingdom for a long time, but... She's getting framed for killing the king, so she's going back to her old kingdom, and she's trying to figure, like, balance her loyalties. So, that's really cool. Jane Unlimited by Christian Kishore. She's also written Graceling and that series. This is a different, and I didn't know anything before I read it, but I don't think it'll spoil anything to say, like, it's a sort of a choose-your-own-adventure story, but it actually just kind of goes in order because she didn't want to deal with the choose-your-own part, and so she just went in the order that she wanted to. And one of them is still haunting me, and I try not to think about it because otherwise I'll be too freaked out. An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Uh, this is a fairy tale, like capital F-A-E-R-I-E. -E. Um, a little bit like, you know, what do you get? What do you give? The fairies, a little bit of like kingdom things, fairy kingdom things. It's just regular old times in mortal lands, so I guess that's good. Um, speak Easy, Speak Love by Mikkel George. I loved this one. It is a retelling of Much Ado About Nothing set in the Prohibition Era. I think America. Yeah, for sure America. 
but I am a little bit of a sucker for Much Ado About Nothing adaptations. This might be a good time to admit that The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You, which I mentioned last year, I think, as one of my standouts. I checked it out again this year because it's a Much Ado About Nothing one, and I just really liked it. And I really loved Speak Easy, Speak Love. The characterization was great. The plot was great. I just felt really good about it. And let's see. All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefvater. Sometimes Maggie Stiefvater gets a little intense for me, a little bit heavy. This one never quite got there. I just felt a little more like it was along for the ride. And not that I knew that everything would be okay. Um, but like, I wasn't like stressed the way I have been with some of her other books. So I really enjoyed that one. It's um, set in Southwest Colorado and there's like miracles and stuff. Everybody wants a miracle, but they're afraid of what they have to do to get it or something like that. Trouble is a Friend of Mine by Stephanie Tromley. I took this one with me on Christmas vacation and my mom stole it and she read it first and she loved it. So I liked it too. I forgot to take a picture of it. Not that that matters because I haven't put any pictures yet, but I might. I don't know. Future me and her movie editing skills, still a question. I'll at least put it on the blog post. But I do happen to have with me the sequel. I checked this out yesterday and I read it today. <laughs> Not the last book of the year, though. That's something else. But, so here's a picture of the sequel. Trouble makes a comeback. It's just like, you know, high school love. Not really. Um, more like crime fighting. Um, I also recently read Not Now, Not Ever by Lily Anderson. This is the one that did the Much Ado About Nothing high school one that I keep thinking about. It's an adaptation of The Importance of Being Earnest. I'm just not sure that made it into the, into it. And then actually the final book of the year. I mean, the day's still young. Like, obviously it's still light outside. Yeah. Um, but like the planned final book of the year, I just finally finished this one. It took me like over a year to finish, but I did it. I've read it before, but it had been a long time, so. And I used to be in a book club where we were reading it, but obviously we didn't have a lot of accountability toward each other since it took me a full year to read that one, but I guess now I can watch the movie if I want. Anyway, that's it. My resolution to read more nonfiction, I don't think it happened. My dowry books still sit just hanging out on my shelf, and we'll see what happens next. Happy New Year.